Jesus, we are this waking, Lord, the powers of heaven are shaking, keep your love, for dream and burning, ready for your Lord's returning, Lord, he comes, Lord, Jesus comes, Lord, he comes, he comes, oh, glorious Jesus comes, to reign victorious, Lord, He comes, yes, Jesus comes. Thank you, Goreshas. Now let us take our minds to the word of prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we come unto you this evening. We thank you for the tender care that you have taken upon us. Thank you for taking us through the first program. And now we are uh, entering into the second program. We are presenting our pastor, Yusim Abandandiri. And that will be done now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we are going to have our second program, uh, and that is the sermon. And we welcome our speaker, who is Pastor Johnson Nyagaka, to come forth and give us thy word. Yes, thank you, Pastor. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Hello, hello. Hopefully it is working. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me, and thank you for those of us who are listening, those of us who are near or in, uh, connected through Zoom, wherever you are listening from, and those of us who made to church, thank you so much for having a created time to come before the Lord God Almighty. Thank you also for the music uh, directors, those of us who have been singing here and leading the music uh, session. Thank you so much. We want to thank you for also the creating time to come and worship God. Tonight, I'm going to take you to the Bible. We have had a series about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And from Sunday, we've been looking into the reasons which made in Christ, which are making Christ, that are making Christ to come back. On Sunday, we dealt with the universal sin problem. And we identified from the Bible, the Bible was able to show us what sin is. And uh, I remember by yesterday evening, we presented that which God, that which men could not do, God did. And we looked at an example that is in the Bible, in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, where King Darius was unable to save his friend Daniel, the man that King Darius knew to be very faithful, a man who was honest, trustworthy, but he was unable to save him from being thrown into the den of the lions because of the immutable law of the land of the Medians and the Persians, as recorded in the book of Daniel chapter 6, verse 8. The law was immutable, and so it demanded the lawbreaker to be thrown into the den of the lions, as it were. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 17, we also looked at the immutable law of the Lord God that he had given to our first parents 
and that is Adam and Eve, not to eat or touch the tree of the knowledge of evil, good and evil. But that was an immutable law. Because that book in chapter 2, verse 17 says, For that day you shall do that, surely you will die. That demanded the death of Adam, eternal death. But yesterday evening we looked at the Bible, we said, For so God loved the world that it began immediately after the fall of Adam. It began the plan of salvation. And that is what we enjoy now. In that we said yesterday, that which, God, which, that which man could not do, God did. God became man. God became sin. God became a curse so that he may save humanity because it's only God who is perfect. Only God can live eternally and only God can die and rise up again. These three things could not be done by any human being. These three things could never be done by any human being. But God was able to do them. Tonight, I'm taking you to the man. And that man is not a man. But he's a man. The son of man. Who brought liberty to the entire world. And before I go into the session, I will invite every one of us to turn our Bibles to the book of, Dan, to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. You can have time, if you have time enough, read the entire text, but I'm more interested with verses 6, 7, and 8, and 10, and 11, as recorded by the man servant of the Lord, uh, the Apostle Paul. In verse, seven, verse 6, concerning seal, persecuting the, uh, concerning seal, persecuting the Christians according to the righteousness, but... Verse 7, but what things were gained to me, according to, the, according to Apostle Paul, but what things were gained to me, these are counted laws for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things laws for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and that I be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. Dear brethren, brothers and sisters, what is this big thing that is making Paul to make a turnabout of his life? What are these things, what big thing made Paul to make a 360 degree turning all around his life? The Bible notes it in Philippians chapter 3. All the things that were worthy, all of the things that were important to Apostle Paul, he said he counted them my laws, considering that which God Christ had done. To the Apostle Paul, he only wants to know one thing, Christ and him crucified. Christ and him crucified made the entire difference in his life. And this is the goodness of the gospel. And tonight, allow me to present that gospel to you. Christ 
Who is the good news? Christ, the gospel. The Bible tells us in the book of um, in the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah tells us no Numbers chapter twenty-four verse seventeen. I will start from Numbers, the book of Numbers chapter twenty-four verse seventeen. A star shall come out of Jacob. This was a prophecy from the beginnings so many years ago. In fact, those of us who are students of the Bible, you will note in chapter 3, Genesis, God begins with this story. When he kills the animals and covers the, covers, covers the nakedness of the, our first parents, it indicated a savior who was to come and die for humanity. A star shall come out of Jacob. And this is the star that I'm going to present to you tonight. My dear friends who are listening from wherever source you are. You assist me, this thing might bring a little challenge. It is working? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I'm facing the wrong way, the wrong, I don't think so. It's okay, right? Oh, thank you so much. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, this is a very known uh, text in the Bible, a promise that was given to prophet, uh, through prophet Isaiah, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. God had prepared a way that this star who shall come out of Jacob shall save humanity. Behold, the virgin shall, bear, shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Why? Look at this. To us, a son is given. In the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 9. To us, a son is given. That son is the savior of humanity. To us, not only a son, the government will be on his shoulders. Not only that, as presented in the book of Isaiah chapter 9, not only the government, but the Bible also says, uh, this thing is not working, I don't know. I'm trying. It's okay. It will work. Just, it will work. And he will be called a wonderful counselor. That star, that star shall be called a wonderful counselor. Not only that, the Bible in Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, he will also be called mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, everlasting Father. Not only that, but the Prince of Peace. We are talking of a Savior who is the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father, God Almighty. Some of us do not understand this story. And this is what I'm bringing to you tonight. That we have a savior in Jesus Christ. We have a redeemer in Jesus Christ. Who is the prince of peace. Once you have him, you have everything in this world. You have the hope. Remember this story in the book of Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 1. When Gabriel is sent by, by God to bring these good tidings to humanity through, uh, through, through his, the, the, this lady, Ma Mary, the Bible says that the angel said to her, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth the son and he shall, be, is, is, and shall call his name Jesus. The name Jesus means a savior. Emmanuel means God with humanity, God with man. 
And that is the entire story of incarnation, of how God became God, became man. Another mystery implied in the name Emmanuel. Of how God, in order to save humanity, had to become a man. The name Jesus, as directed by, through by Angel Gabriel to marry the mother of Jesus, meant the Savior. Any moment, any day you mention the name Jesus, it means Savior. Because the Bible tells you this was the greatest good tidings to humanity. Remember the angels, when they come down and the entire world, the, the world, I'm, I'm talking about the, the, the kingdom of Israel, the children of God were dead sleep. They did not know that the Savior had been born. The entire world had been eclipsed in, the, in total darkness. But the angels of heaven, the angels from heaven came and sang a song and brought the good tidings that to us a child has been born. And this is the greatest and the sweetest story of humanity. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Because the Savior has been born to us, to all to the world, to save the world from sin. Now let's go a little bit down the Bible. Remember the Magi from East. This is a story written by Matthew in chapter 2. These were wise men from the East. The wise men from the East, they were not Israelites in any way. These were foreigners, but who had studied, who had knowledge of the stars? They were astronomers, but they saw a star. In their studies, they had seen a star appearing, and that star was not usual. To them, it meant a savior, a king had been born. And so they come following that star unto Jerusalem. When they get to Jerusalem, they find a people who are quite asleep. The church leaders knew nothing. The leadership was also in total darkness. And so they go to the king and they ask King Herod, where is this king? Where is this child? Who has been born? The king of the Jews. The king of the Jews. And that is when King Herod makes hasty and calls the church leaders to inquire from them when, if this is true, that a child was to be born. I'm talking about the Messiah. I'm talking about Jesus. The star, according to Numbers chapter 24, verse 17, a star shall come out of Jacob. And this is a star that good, brings good tidings. Remember the angels sing that song to the shepherds who are taking care of the sheep of their flock. They sing a song, glory to the highest, glory to God in the highest. This was indeed the most important time in the history of humanity when God comes down to deliver humanity from the eternal death. But let's go on a little bit. Let's get into the story of the Bible now. Jesus is born. All of us understand that story. And then he comes up with his mission statement. Remember one day in the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 17, 18, 19, when he starts his ministry on earth, when Jesus starts his ministry on earth, he spells out his mission statement. Aha! All children of God must have a, state, a mission of statement, a mission statement. Why are you here? 
Why are we here? Just to eat, build homes, buy cars, enjoy life, and die? Jesus had a mission statement that is recorded in Isaiah chapter 6, 1, verses 1 and 2. The Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken-hearted. What a powerful, a powerful message from the divine. The Lord has anointed me. This was indeed the greatest Great, great tidings from the Savior. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Those with heavy hearts, we have a Savior. Not only that, the Bible continues in verse 2. The Bible, verse 2, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Jesus flees people who are cap in captivity, who have been held in captive by the devil. And so he says, I have come to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Christ is able to let us free. From, free from the chains of the evil. Christ is able to set us free and give us, indeed, the, I mean, give us the real peace that we desire as children of God. For the Bible calls him the Prince of Peace. Let's go on a little bit into the Bible. Let's get into the Bible. When he begins his ministry, Remember, his message was simple. This was his mission statement. I have come to heal the brokenhearted. He healed the sick. He sympathized with the situation of humanity, of human beings. He still has a heart of caring to us. First Peter chapter 5, verses 7. Do you have anything? Do you have a challenge? Remember, we have a God in Jesus who has your own. He knows what you go through. He knows what we go through. He became man. He understands our infirmities. He understands our challenges. He is touched with our cries. He knows what goes on in our lives. When you cry, is not far from you. The Bible does not just stop from hearing of the brokenhearted, but the Bible tells you, hey, this thing, yeah, he healed the sick. I want to move a little bit further. My brother, if you can, hey, it's okay, it's okay. It's, it's working. It's now working. I don't know. Yeah. He forgave sin. He was setting people free from captivity. This lady, you remember one day, while Jesus was in the temple praying, another minister of the gospel was busy having sex out there. And so he was caught, but set free. But this lady was dragged naked before Jesus. Men of all ages surrounding Jesus Christ, all of them with stones in their hands, ready to stone this lady. And when they come to Jesus, they ask, you remember, the law of Moses commanded that whoever commits adultery shall be stoned to death. What do you say, Master? Jesus forgave this lady. I remember that day when he said, if you, are the, if you have never, if you are never, if you have never done this, 
be the first one to throw a stone to her. None of them did that. They all walked away. They all walked away. Jesus raised the dead. He raised the dead. And that is why he is the good news to all of us. If he was able to do that, one day we also be raised. And even our fellow brothers and sisters, our family members and friends who have slept in the Lord, there is a day that is set for us to see them. This is the good news that I'm bringing to you. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 2 and verse 3 presents Jesus in a peculiar way that I want to read to you and I recommend this text to all of us who are listening. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Jesus and I'm talking about Jesus here. Paul is talking about Jesus. He's saying he set us free from the law of sin and death. All of us who are set to, to, who are set to die forever, eternal death, God gave us through Christ. He set us free from that law of sin and death. Verse 3. For what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of a sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in his in he condemned, he condemned sin in sinful man. In other words, Christ being born in a human nature. He became sin, as we read yesterday in the Bible. And, those, but, and, 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 and in that act, he was able to set humanity free. And that is the joy of salvation. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, if you're able to read, he himself bore our sins in his body on a tree. He bore our sin, our sins in his body on the tree so that he might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds. You have been healed. This text quotes the text of Isaiah 53. Peter quotes Isaiah 53. By all these things, our salvation costed Christ his life. When he was hanged on that tree that Friday evening, when he was hanged on that tree naked, imagine God on a tree, naked. You have never imagined of that. People just see a savior, you just see a man. That was not a man. He was God in a sinful nature. He was bearing the sin of humanity. On that day, on a cross, naked on a tree, every passerby could see him. He stood there. I mean, not stood. He was hung there on that tree. He bore a sin. And that is what the Bible tells you. For so God loved the world that he sent his son to become the second Adam. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45 through 47. I may not read the entire text. The Bible says the first man Adam became a living being. The last Adam who is Christ a living, a life giving spirit. Christ gives us that life eternal. Verse 46, the spiritual did not come first, but the natural and after that the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man from heaven. Christ was from heaven. And so he, he gives us a new rebirth. 
a new life, a transformation from dust to spirit. And that is the experience that we attain in Christ, what Christ has done. You know, let me try to join these words together. Zoo plus plus bios. In order for Christ to be legally qualified as the savior of the world, God had to unite his zoo. Zoo means life. To the corporate bios, the flesh of sin. Life of the human race. That is what I mean that needed redeeming. Read with me in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16. God united himself, his life, with the life of a sinner. His life with the human race so that we are able to have that life. And the only bridge Towards achieving this was Christ. God did it. God the Son did it on our behalf. First Corinthians 1 30. It is because of him that you are in Christ, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. And this is the joy. I'm, re- I'm presenting to all of us who are listening. This is the good news. In all religions, there is no religion better than what the Bible provides. That there is a God who became a man. There is God who took my sinful nature and dealt with it at the cross. He bore, he, he destroyed it, but it, it, at the end of it, giving me life. He became man. He took his place in the womb of Mary, and that is what we call incarnation, God becoming human, God becoming man. Let's go on, my brother. Let's go on. Hebrews chapter 2, I will not read this, I read that yesterday, that since the children were half flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. Verses 15, which is very important. If you are able to underline that in your Bible, there are people who think that the Bible is so holy that you cannot inscribe in it or underline in it because you think it to go as Okay, if, you, if that is your belief, that is okay. But mine, I have done so many underlinings because that one, I mean, it assists me, it reminds me of the major, of, of some of those important things in the Bible. Verse 15. And free those who are in their lives who are held in slavery by the fear of death. Why did Christ become human? To destroy death and give us life eternal. Verse 15. Why did Christ become human? To destroy death and give us eternal, eternal life, eternal life. His history, the history of Christ Jesus. And this is the good news. This is the way it starts to be okay. His history, the history of Christ became ours. Just just as Adam's history became our history, so Christ's history became ours. Whatever we couldn't do for ourselves, he did, he did with us in him. Not only that, my dear friends, the Bible says his death was our death. When you see that man hanging on on that tree on Friday evening, when you hear his last words, God forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. 
when he pronounces his last words, as recorded by John 19, verse 30, it is finished. What was finished? The salvation of humanity. His death was our death. For Christ's life compels us in chapter 2, 2 Corinthians 5, 14. Because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ and no longer live, but Christ lives in me. I love Hebrews chapter 2, verses 9, but we, have, we see Jesus who was, who was made a little, a little what? A little lower than the angels, now crying with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God he might test death for everyone. Christ tested death for everyone. Hebrews 2 verses 9. And so you need not to die. And let me tell you the good news. He did that to entire humanity. This death he did, he died for all of us. Regardless whether you love him or not. And that is what the Bible says. For so God loved the world. We did not love God. He is the one who loved us first. He died for us. He tested death for everyone. His victory over the devil was our victory. And so all of us as we rejoice in Christianity. As we rejoice in having hope in Christ. You know, as we rejoice in our lives, remember, his victory over the devil was our victory. Hebrews 2 verse 14, I read that. I'll read 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is victory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ, victory has been promised. Out of Christ, no victory. Doom is spelled. His resurrection was our resurrection. You remember that Sunday morning when the tomb was opened, the stone is rolled away. And this lady comes running. When, when she gets near the, grave, near the grave, the tomb, he sees the stone rolled away. She was amazed. She gets into it. Before she gets in, she, found, she finds angels. And the angels tell her, do not be afraid. Don't you be afraid. He has arisen. This is the good news. His resurrection was our resurrection. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Now listen, my fellow brothers and sisters. The death of Christ, that day, Sunday morning, when Christ came out of the grave, he raised the entire humanity. Born and unborn to the heavenly realm. That now there is hope of eternal life. If you ever believe in him, there is eternal life. By one act, that act of Christ you know, coming out of the grave that Sunday morning, going to heaven, he seated with us. He seated with us in heaven. It doesn't mean that we are gone there, but our salvation is sure. By that act, he finished our salvation. Eternal death was put away. 
The only thing you do is accept, make a choice, or deny him. He has done it for you. He has paid the debt. He has paid the penalty of debt. That immutable law that demanded death of Adam, he has paid it for us. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 18. And I want to quote this text. And I know the, the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. The man of God who wrote this, the book of, Hebrew, uh, the book of Revelation was John the Liberator. <laughs> you know the story around him. The book of Revelation was written around 95 AD to 96 AD. 95 AD, 96 AD. He was the youngest of all the disciples of Christ. This story, you know, I know. And you know from history that the Roman Empire, the Roman kingdom had tried to kill him. Just as the way they had, 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 had killed many of the disciples of Christ. When they caught this man, they had him prepared, they, they prepared to kill him. And because he was unable to be killed, he was sent to a small island called the island of Patmos, where he writes this book of Revelation, the Revelation of Christ Jesus. In verse 18, first, that is Revelation 1.18. God says, Christ, Christ comes down to console, to comfort John the Revelator because he was alone in this, in this island of Patmos. And so he, he, he tells him, ah, go back, he tells him, I am who was he who am, I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Go, get to the next one. And I have the keys of age and death. You know, Christ is telling John the Reverator, don't you worry. In my hand, I have the keys of the grave. And in my hand, I have the keys of death. He paid it all for me. He paid it all for me. He has paid it all for me. By his resurrection, remember that Sunday morning? By his resurrection, he took the entire humanity. Adam, Nyagaka, Masimba, Oyaro, Mokami, Maka, you are, every sort of the human race, they were taken from death to life. And that's why the Bible tells you he is now seated in heaven because he has paid it all for humanity. In his hand, he holds the keys of the grave and death. What is the good news here? If Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he is more than human. He is divine. Let's get into the next slides and I'll be done. His history is our history. His history is our history. I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You can go read verses 45 through 49. I'm interested with verse 48 and 49. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as, 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 as the man from heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. What a wonderful message to us, my brothers and sisters. What a wonderful message here we have. What a wonderful message. I, I don't know what I did. 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 Did I do something? Is it okay? 
He himself gives life and breath to everything. He satisfies every need that there is. Mm -hmm. In Jesus, you have a savior. In Jesus, you have a hope. Right? That is the good news. That is the good news. Just go a little bit further. Where do you belong? Where do I belong? Where be, where do I, we are saved or lost by the descent we belong to. Yeah, if you belong to the descent of the unforgiven, you have chosen the devil, the dominator of this world, you are lost. But if you decide to choose Christ who has paid it for you, you have heaven, you have life. So you are lost by the descent we belong to. The way is now open for us. The way is open to you, my listener, wherever you are. I beseech you, you choose Christ and life eternal shall be yours. Let's go a little bit down and I'll be done. Because he has paid it all. You know, many stories have been written. There are people in this world who are willing to die. Who are willing to die for Christ. One of them was John the Liberator. John was willing to die rather than give up his belief in this divine Christ. And you think it's only John? We have the Apostle Paul who was put in chains and he died not denying Christ. He died not forsaking Christ. There are so many people in history. The history of Christianity has seen so many people martyred. We have so many people who are martyrs of their faith. Some of them were crucified. Some of them were paraded and eaten by lions. Some of, some of them were burned like John Ash. John Ash was one of the, these people that we know in history of the history of Reformation. He was burned alive. And this man called John Ash died singing a hymn. He died singing a hymn. I remember from history when this church leader comes to John As and asks John As, do you recant your teachings? Do you recant your teachings? John As says, how can I recant my salvation? How can I recant my salvation? How can I deny him who has changed my life? How can I deny Jesus Christ? And by that, he announced his death. The fire was lit, and John has died singing. So he crowned his death by singing the salvation that Christ had given to him. There are so many people. This is about making a decision of what Christ had done to you. Just go on, my brother. This is about making a decision of what Christ has done to you. You remember that night when Christ said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That Friday evening, it was about the heaviness he had about our sin challenge, our sin problem. My God, what, why have you forsaken me? It was about the burden of this, of, of, he was bearing for humanity. He had a burden for us. He was struggling to save humanity. And so heaven was quiet because the Redeemer had to do it. God had designed to save humanity and it had to cost him his own life. Go on, my brother. Revelations 2, verse 8 and 9. By, for by grace you have been saved. For by grace. Grace, what is a gra grace? Grace is unmerited favor. What is grace? Unmerited favor. We don't deserve it. You don't desire it. It is something that God has freely given to people who do not deserve it. 
unmerited faith. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not by yourselves. That you cannot boast. And if there is anybody who wants to boast, let him boast because of what God has done. It is not I, but Christ. No wonder why Paul says, I do not want to know anything else, but I want to know one thing. Him crucified, him, Jesus, him crucified and resurrected. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, this is the story that we have for you. Now let's go a little bit. You remember that day when the Lord says, Lord, give me the gift of said, No, 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 just go on, go on, go on a little bit. First Peter 1, 18, 19. Our salvation is not with money. You are not bought by money. No, not money. It is you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of our God. The God, her God, God had to die. <laughs> yeah, had I made it, God had to die. These are things that humanity cannot appreciate, cannot understand, a mystery on how God can die. And by his blood, humanity was set free, was given freedom, was given life. No wonder why he says, he is the resurrection. He is the life. He told Mary that. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And so tomorrow, if you die, if tomorrow you go to the hospital and the doctors tell you, you have, uh, if we don't see you having to live within three months, it's okay. Accept it. Because that is not death. Just that is sleeping. There is hope beyond the grave. We have a savior who says, I, whether you die or live, you shall live. Because he has, he is the power of resurrection. What Christ did accomplish for you. Now this is where I'm going to finish my, I'm finishing my sermon now. I'm finishing my presentation. Now listen. This is a conclusion I'm giving all of us. What did Christ accomplish for you and me? I'll give you in point form. And in all this, Christ was made what before he was not. Christ was God. And so he was made what before he was not in order that the man might be made now and forever what he is not. Christ became what he, before he was not so that you and I may become, may become now and forever what we have not been. I don't know whether you guys understand this, but because you are an English-speaking nation, I, uh, my English might be broken. I came from the villages. I don't, I, of course, I don't care. I'm not ashamed of coming from the villages or having an accent. I don't care about that. But if I'm able to transmit this information to you, thank God. I may not be able to be so fluent. Thank God. I wasn't born in America. And who told you Americans know English? They don't know English. They don't know English. They only speak broken English. Christ was the son of God. Christ was the son of God. He became the son of man. That the sons of men might become the sons of God. Hallelujah, my brothers. I'm going to emphasize this point until we come to the end of our crusade. Every single day that you are no longer the sons of Adam. Mm -mm. We are no longer the sons of Adam. 
that was broken that Friday evening. And on Sunday morning, he sealed it completely when he resurrected and he made me and you sons and daughters of the kingdom of heaven. We are forever given eternity. We are forever having life. Life eternal. Mm. Christ was spirit. Yeah, he was. Because God is spirit. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45. He became flesh. Now imagine of spirit becoming flesh. And that is what I said. Incarnation. God becoming man. In order that man who is flesh might become spirit. John chapter 3 verse 6, you remember that story of the baptism? When a man, Nicodemus, comes to Christ and begs Christ to accept him and Christ challenges him to a second birth and Nicodemus wonders, how could an old man like me get back to my mama's womb and be born again? And Christ tells him in verse 6, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Are you with me, my dear friends? We must experience this new life that the Lord has given us. We are no longer of the flesh. God has taken us from the world of the flesh. We are now in the kingdom of the spirit. I don't know whether you guys understand this. But you may be able to understand if you may. That God has taken us from the world of death. Of flesh to another, another level. The world of the spirit. God is spirit. And that is why we say that. Man who was flesh might become spirit. John 8 verses 8 through 10. Read that. We are children of God. Born of the spirit of Yahweh. Now, Christ was altogether of the divine nature. Indeed, God, Christ was divine. His nature was divine. Was made partaker of human nature. In order that he, we who are all together of the human nature might be partakers of the divine nature. Second Peter chapter 1 verses 4. This is the story we all have. The last one, please. The last one. Go to the last one there. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Christ who knew no sin was made. What? Was made. Christ became sin. And I mean today, let me pronounce it, he became sin. There are, there are people in this world who think that Christ, uh, how can God become a sin? That is what he became. By being born like us. Even the sinfulness of man, in order that we who knew no righteousness, might be made the righteousness, even the righteousness of God. A man who knew not any, any righteous thing to do. We are now able to know what righteousness is because of what Christ has done for me and you. Now go down. It says here, his grace is enough to redeem his power is able, is enough to do what? To transform. His love is, in, is enough to trust. His presence is enough to satisfy. And this is the Savior I'm presenting you tonight. I'm presenting, I'm presenting this Savior to you. My dear friend, I have no any, any other person to present. He's done a lot. He is our savior. He has given a new list of life to us. He has given us salvation. He has given us hope. Remember this 
notion tonight is standing on your door knocking. Do you accept what Christ has done on your behalf, has accomplished? Are you willing to be partakers of the kingdom of heaven? Are, we, are you willing to be called the child of God just because of what God has done for you? For so God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that me and you may be saved and enjoy everlasting life are you willing to participate in that everlasting life? Are you enjoy? Are you, are you willing to be one of those people who have eternity just because of what God has done and not what you have done? Because none of us is holy. None of us deserves, deserves this. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. By being a pastor does not mean I'm a holy man. I count myself dust. Just as Paul, what matters is to know him and him crucified and resurrected. He's standing, knocking at your door. Are you willing to usher him in that he may dine with you? That he may give you a new life in you? That he may give you a hope beyond this world? If so, may you rise up as we pray together. Our dear Father, I want to thank you for my sister, my brother, my young man, the audience that you have prepared for this evangelistic meeting. Your word cannot go without touching somebody and transforming a life. Because your word is a, is a, a, double, a double sword. It's so sharp that it tears, it tears it gives a new life. It transforms. And so, God, tonight, I pray for a change of life. I pray for this salvation to be experienced in the lives of the listener. And whatsoever challenges that we are going through, may, they, may those challenges hinder us from making a decision to have eternal life. There is hope in you, Jesus. There is hope in Jesus Christ. And so I pray for my listener tonight. Bless him. And he make this, as they make this, this decision of Father having you, in, welcoming you, inviting you into their lives, may you transform them unto being your children. And as you do that, remember me and my colleague those of us who are presenting this truth to the children of God, in Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. And may the Lord keep you safe until tomorrow. Thank you. The listeners, the choristers, you can come over here and present the last item as we usher our listeners. And thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I invite you tomorrow. We shall also be uh, discussing uh, these very important lessons. Tomorrow we shall see how judgment will be. For those of us who, do, who have accepted Christ, what will be part, our part in the judgment and for those who will reject the Savior, what will be their judgment? Judgment is for every human being. And so tomorrow I shall be giving out that discussion. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Welcome, my sisters and brothers. Let's all stand up for the theme song, 598. We shall sing one stanza and the colors. Watch you saints with eyelids waking, Lord, the powers of heaven are shaking. Keep your lungs all trimmed and burning, ready for 
your Lord's returning. Lo, He comes, Lord Jesus comes, Lo, He comes, He comes, so oh, glorious Jesus comes to reign victorious, Lord.